Marion County Public Schools takes student achievement very seriously and has dedicated the resources to make this reading camp a successful endeavor fulfilling our goal of developing successful citizens, every student, every day. Third grade reading camp gives our students the ability to come in during the summer and practice their reading skills which will help them make gains if they need during the next school year. It starts with the, the, the maintenance people who come in and help clean up the rooms at the end of the school year to get them ready for a whole new set of students coming in. We have to then get permission slips back from parents stating that they do want their child to come to summer camp because it is free but some parents make the decision not to send them. Then it goes to transportation and transportation has to establish bus routes because busing is included in the process. It takes a full cafeteria staff to make breakfast and lunch for all of our students. As administrators we are here to greet the students and to dismiss them as well as produce the rosters, make sure that the right students are in the right classrooms. If a student has a disability, we need to make sure that their accommodations are offered within their disability so that they get the same accommodations that they have during the school year. If they are a student who speaks another language, we also provide the accommodations that they would get during the school year. So it's school on a smaller basis. Walking around or did they jump? Fly. They started flying. Why did they start flying? There's several reasons that a student could come to our summer reading camp. Um, first of which is if they had scored a level one on the Florida Standard Assessment. And also if they have scored a level two, their parents have the opportunity to bring them in to receive additional remediation so that they will be more successful next year in fourth grade. If not, at the end of reading camp, they will be given the SAT 10 and given the opportunity to be promoted to the fourth grade and not have to repeat third grade. As soon as they get here, we feed them breakfast, of course, and then they go to, to their classroom and they work on their foundational reading skills, phonics, phonemic awareness, fluency, that type of uh, activity, which will help them get better with their comprehension, which is what they'll need in third grade, potentially again, or fourth. Um, they then go to lunch and they are dismissed at two and they're here Monday through Thursday. I think that the, one of the most important things about summer reading camp is that the instruction continues when it goes home. And I know that our parents are very, very willing to bring their students here. We've had a very good turnout. And so if we have parents that care to bring their children here, it would be wonderful if they continued to read at home with their children. While the Silver River Museum's first ever summer camps didn't have as many students as organizers had hoped, the smaller groups turned out to be a blessing in disguise. We didn't have this number of kids we thought we would have, but it made it much more personal and we got to know the kids much more intimately and they were super fun to be with. We had Ice Age Day, Indian Day, Pioneer Day. We got to go to Silver Springs and launch rockets. Monday it was Ice Age and we did at lateral throws. We did museum work. They were learning about um, the Indians, what Florida was like during the Ice Age. On Tuesday, it was about the Timucuan Indians and the Seminole Indians, roughly going back 500 years to 200 years ago. They're also competing. There's two teams competing for ribbons. They've named their groups. And then um, yesterday was all about pioneers. We're moving forward in time. So yesterday was just 200 years ago. Then today it's about the modern marvels. We did two different glass bottom boat rides. They did the tram ride through the woods. And now they're learning all about the rockets. Tomorrow afternoon when the parents come in, they take their parents around our campus and they teach their parents what they've learned here at the camp. So there are many tour guides for everything that they've learned in the museum, here in the classroom, and out in the village. I liked Pioneer Day and how we got to dress up in Pioneer costumes and do the chores and, do, and go in the schoolhouse. My favorite part was watching all the kids dress up, I think on Pioneer Day. They all got into costume and they just all get really into it and it's really fun. Um, and then I just love like being with the kids and the interactions and the connections I make. Um, some wrote notes to me you know, that hold on to you and stuff like that. And I think that's really fun. I'm looking forward to doing it again. Yes, we will do it next year.
Um, the theme will be different. That was the whole goal is that we would have different themes. The kids, we've asked them what they thought and they would like to see one topic done the first week and then advance a second week to a different topic so they can come back and do it again. So I thought that was pretty impressive that they wanted to come back again and again. Student-driven learning is the goal for every classroom. STEMCon 2017 at Evergreen Elementary is giving the students attending this year's event the opportunity to assume a leadership role in the education process. I believe that STEMCon is an extremely important thing for kids, even not just for fifth graders, but for all grades from three to five. Um, and it's just, it's teaching them those social skills, the team building skills. Um, it gives everybody a chance to find that leadership role, to think critically, because they, they just kind of asked for masking tape. They brought it with them thinking, hoping that they would be able to use that to stabilize everything. And it's that critical thinking and the creative thinking that I believe that the kids need. Well, specifically, we were teaching about um, vertical wind tunnels and updraft and how that can sort of affect objects. We are using this one, uh, paper plates and paper cups just to see you know, what would happen with each one. So they noticed with the paper plate, it seemed to hover around a little more, but it's got that UFO flying saucer sort of feel to it. It's like a Frisbee. And a lot of them thought that this paper cup here was gonna just rock it right off. But they noticed that since it was, you know, a little bit wider, a little smaller, it seemed to sort of flip around as opposed to move up the wind tunnel as the paper plate did. Did the cup and the plate do different things? Yes. yes. Don't put those on your head. Why? So a lot of it is teamwork, because we had them in groups of five, and it's building up on that social skill of someone might take the leadership position. Someone might take more of, you know, the, I don't really know what to do. So they're waiting for those orders. Um, but it, honestly, every single one of them seemed to take up that leadership role. They seemed to find their own ways of how to fix it. And one of our groups even went through their wind tunnel maybe two or three times before they were actually set on it. A few months ago, our superintendent announced what she called game-changing decisions in our district. Most notably, 23 schools would be getting new principals. Of those 23, 10 of us are first-time principals in our district, four of whom come from outside Marion County Schools. 16 changes are at the elementary level. Three of the changes are at the middle school level. And of the seven high schools, four will receive a new principal. Six of the 10 are assistant principals receiving a promotion. And three of us are changing positions, but not schools. Five of the new principals are part of the Golden Apple Academy, joining two others who are already principals. Two of the principals are former District Teachers of the Year. And one was once named Rookie Teacher of the Year. While the appointments don't officially take place until July 1st, we all started at our schools a month early to get ready for the school year. In addition to the 23 principal changes, there are 55 assistant principal changes at 37 schools. And of those, three were once named Golden Apple Teachers. And two were District Rookie Teachers of the Year. That's a total of 78 changes in principals and assistant principals. With only nine schools experiencing no changes at that level. In order to select the right people for those jobs, principals, APs, and district administrators interviewed 169 candidates back in March, some from as far away as Texas and Alaska. It's all part of the superintendent's plan to improve our schools and our students.